this never gets old. In the day, or rather the night that it does. Right, 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 here we go. I don't know what I'll do with myself. <laughs> this is what it's all about, hunting and doing what we love, trying to bring stuff for you guys at home to enjoy. And this is the fruits of our labor. Enough of the sweet talk. Let's go do this again. <laughs> something that's happening Sunday night into very early Monday. We've got the November super moon coming up. The moon is going to appear the biggest it has in seven decades. And that's because the moon is going to be closer to Earth when the full moon actually happens. It's going to look 14% bigger and 30% brighter. So go ahead and set your reminders now. Just about any night hunter with much experience has had some kind of experience with the full moon at some point. And if one were to ask, what their preference was, no moon or new moon, most likely the majority would gladly agree the darker the better when the blasted moon is nowhere in sight. I found the longer I play this game, human nature doesn't change much from one hunter to another, and the longer a night hunter spends time in the field calling during a full moon, the better their odds will be of having a bad night. And as soon as it happens, the first thing they do is reason their way to the moon getting all the blame. Once a night hunter ever crosses that threshold of saying, the heck with it, I'm just staying at home because there's a moon in the sky. They just took some odds for success to a guaranteed zero odds of success. Every night hunter has been there, including ourselves, struggling mentally to not fall into that trap but over countless hours in the rig when the moon was shining big and bright. As long as the Fox Pro is running, we will eventually see something. And that is why we don't let the moon dictate when we hunt. Sure, we've had our fair share of bad nights during a full moon, but to be truthful, the number of blank trips when it was as dark as can be is not too far behind. Besides that, how the heck are we supposed to call up a big fluffy coyote like this one, sitting at home on the couch? Every night hunter needs to know whatever advantage a predator had with the full moon completely goes away the moment you blind him with a light. Now the tables have turned. You can see him and he can't see a thing. Your light is the most important weapon a night hunter has for putting fur in the truck. On nights like these, without it, you're a sitting duck. Man, I cannot believe we pulled that off in this field. I'm kind of in awe right now that we actually were able to pull that off here tonight with the fact that I don't think I've ever seen the moon as bright as what it is right now. Heck, we're going to keep after it. We've been cooped up inside the house with rain and other bad conditions and, of course, the moon phase. And we finally said, man, screw it. Let's go. Let's try and make something happen. And uh, happen it did. <laughs> Heck, let's go get him. I don't think I need to take the creed more on this retrieval. I think I about turned that coyote inside out. Let's go get him. This coyote should have turned around the moment Jared hit him with the scan pro. It's a big old coyote. It's a female. Big old smart female. She's got some age to her. Heck yeah. I'll tell you what, that's a promising thing. We've had warm weather, but she's got a dang good coat on her. Wicked lights have legitimately changed the way we hunt. And for a team of experienced night hunters, that's hard to do. That is what it's all about. Big old pretty North Texas female. 
It's named the Hunter's Moon because it is the one time of the year the moon rises 30 minutes later instead of 50 minutes later, and that allows traditional hunters more light. It's not an ordinary supermoon. This is a hunter's supermoon that lit up the sky. You know, just within the past decade, lighting technology has advanced exponentially with the introduction of all the high efficiency LEDs in all kinds of colors and brightness. A light that used to take a 50 pound 12 volt car battery to power all night can nowadays be accomplished with a few batteries about the size of a common cigarette lighter, small enough to fit in your pocket and light enough to even wear on your head. It seems like every year we always make improvements to our gear that tends to help us on our hunts. Some have helped us a little here or there, but the one single item that we have incorporated into our process that's had the biggest impact on the way we hunt, besides thermal, is without question the Wicked Scan Pro. For years, we were always die-hard handheld light guys because there wasn't a headlamp that was suitable to do the job that didn't come with a 12-volt battery attached to your belt that pulled your pants down every time you took a step. Well, those days are over, and any night hunter looking for a headlamp on steroids, this will run all night on one set of batteries that comfortably sit on your head. The Scan Pro is a no-brainer. Besides that, you will detect a predator's eyes much further and faster when the beam is at eye level compared to when it's at shoulder or waist high. Even the spider's eyes on the ground will glow bigger and brighter shining at eye level. The point is, the sooner you can detect and blind a predator coming to your call, especially on super bright moonlit nights like these, the better your odds are for closing the deal. That was completely unexpected. I can say that's a first. I've never shot a bobcat off a hay bale. That's a good cat too. Uh, yeah, he's he's definitely bigger. He's bigger than we were thinking, but I think that hay bale's a little further over there than we thought too. It's crazy tonight. I, I don't think I've ever seen a moon that was that bright. It's so bright out here. I mean, it looks almost like daylight. I wanna go take a look at him, man. He looks like a pretty one. Let's go check this joker out. We're hunting during the biggest and brightest moon in seven decades and having a blast. Jared just shot a coyote and I got a chance to shoot a big bobcat off a hay bale. There's nothing like walking up on a beautiful cat at night and putting your hands on him for the first time. It's something every night hunter needs to experience. I'm convinced if more hunters would just say the heck with the moon and keep shining, they would be shocked at how many animals they will see even when it's this bright outside. You see, once a hunter figures out they can hide behind their light from any predator, no matter how big and bad the moon may be, their confidence will go off the charts the moment they close the deal on a real trophy like this one. light is the key when it looks like this outside to putting predators within feet of your call and the moment you turn it off you lose the best advantage you had in our book the brighter the light the better to blind them with and even more so to get them killed but that's a matter of opinion there are two main ingredients to being successful in these conditions the first is having a positive mental attitude towards conditions you can't change no matter how hard you try. 
and the second is simply having a good quality light and keeping it on the entire time. We've been asked so many times why we continue to hunt on a full moon, and the best answer I have is we still kill them. This right here, my friend, is a killing machine. No matter what they do, they still can't see what's behind our lights. You still got audio? Check, check. That, my friend, is what you call having a plan come together. It's been a long time since we've killed anything out of this area right here, and that was the last thing I expected was to have a bobcat jump up on a dead gum hay bale. Didn't bargain for two. No, we didn't. Double for our trouble. So that worked out good. We about milked them for all they're worth. Yeah, our wind keeps switching. So when we first pulled in, we had a good wind, and it kind of switched another direction. When they popped up, they it was almost right in their face. But um, luckily, they uh, they didn't get too much of it because they stuck around a little bit too long. Unfortunately, we looked for coyote number two for almost an hour, but never found him. When you hunt at night long enough, you're gonna have some get away from you. It's just part of it. Here he is. That's not a bad coyote at all. He's a little bigger than I thought when they were coming up. Man, I didn't know if we was gonna shoot the left one or the right one. That, that, was, that was a pretty cool stand. A lot of times, you know, we try to get him real close, but Chris said shoot, so we got him. Old Ronnie was right. We always try and get him up close. It's just what we prefer to do. But these two coyotes had just decided to make a stand of their own and not come any closer. One may have survived, but the other met his maker on this moonlit night staring into a light unlike he had ever seen. Lights are something that are so misunderstood that if someone wanted to, they could write a book about nothing but lights and hunting at night. In it, I'm sure, would be lifelong debates over colors and brightness or even beam patterns. For now, we'll save those debates for another night, and we'll focus on the constant that should never vary from one color to another, and that's keeping it in the animal's eyes the entire time. A good example of this concept is, let's say, when you may have been in too big of a hurry driving down the highway, and a police officer decides to pay you a roadside visit to your window, shining a blinding light right in your face. I'm sure everyone knows exactly what I'm talking about. That officer knows and has been trained that keeping you blinded allows him to maintain control of the situation, all while he can see you plain as day, and you can't see him at all, nor his other hand holding a pistol at his side. The moment his light leaves your face, everything changes and control of the situation will shift to the person sitting in the vehicle who could mean to do him harm. The moral to this story, 
is keep them blinded and you will be the one in control and not the animal. If you're wondering why Ronnie's not shooting this coyote, it's because we're waiting to do the right thing and let him cross the fence. Rule number one in Night Hunting's 101 Book of Common Sense says never shoot across a fence you don't have 110% permission or access on the other side. Due to all the rain, we were forced to hug a fence separating two pastures. The side we were on was completely fair game but the other was questionable, but we still weren't taking the chance. If a landowner ever tells you anything like this, by the way, if you guys see a coyote on my neighbor's place across the fence, go ahead and get him also. Don't worry, he won't mind. That's your first clue to go and knock on their door and ask. Never assume it's okay, because the first time you do, you'll find out real quick what assume really stands for or worse. I could tell this coyote was trying to find a way through the fence. So all we could do at this point is be patient and wait. And that's what we did. And we waited. And waited some more. And just about the point that I was about to lose faith. There he is. That was crazy. Well, Ronnie's got, he's got 110% permission on the right side of the field and the east side of the property. He's about 99% sure he's got permission, but we had that coyote standing at 20 yards tops, if that. But we still did the right thing by trying to do our best to get him to go through the fence. I don't know how long we worked on him, but we got set up, hit the call, and I shined over there and I saw three or four different sets of sets of eyes. I thought they were could have been reflectors, but apparently not. They were a group of coyotes. And the landowner said he's been seeing four or five coyotes in a in a group, but it kind of stinks when you call every one of them up on a piece of property, you're not hundred percent sure that you <laughs> that you're good. That was awesome. I say we light him up, we'll go check him out. Wouldn't surprise me if it's a younger one because he, he was pretty dumb and he was almost straight downwind. But we'll take it. Let's go look at him. As it turns out, the neighbor had been losing chickens for several weeks and now that side is fair game. I like these ones, you don't have to go track them. <laughs> That's a good coyote, man. Nothing wrong with that coyote. That's a big old coyote. Shoot, yeah, man, that's a big old coyote. Hunting at night on a full moon reminds me of something my dad would tell me when I was a kid about fishing in the rain. He would say, son, don't ever let a little rain keep you from going fishing. The fish are already wet anyway. Well, the older I got, the more I realized that lesson was not as much about a fish already being wet as it was about not letting the conditions dictate getting out and having a good time. We found that simply getting out and making yourself available will always put more fur on the ground than sitting at home on the couch complaining about the moon. Sure, you're going to have your bad nights with the good ones, but if you love it enough, you'll find a way to just go fishing. And the catching will happen when it's time and you're there to enjoy it.